afternoon or good morning depends on what part of the country you're uh, watching this video in if you hear in the background noise I got the air conditioner going and I'm running a, a different camera I'm running a cheap Samsung F40 it does mp4s but I found that I can do close-up works with this as well as watch it on a monitor with the AV cable so we're going to attempt to do that the quality of this camera is not all that good but for this close-up work I think it'll do okay but for scenery and stuff the quality is horrible but anyways I want to thank VW Westlife for posting this manual on his website and I was able to download it rather than to try to read it off the website. That way I can print out what pages I want. And what I had done here is print out all the schematics of the Tektronix 2336 which is the same, just about the same as this. Now, I've had a lot of help with some of the, my viewers here. I probably don't need to talk very loud on this thing, but I am because the air condition, this microphone and this camera is very sensitive. So, it may, the air conditioner may be drowning the uh, sound out. So, excuse if I'm talking loud, it's only because I'm trying to go over the air conditioner so you'll be able to hear me. Anyways, I've had a lot of uh, viewers help me out with this, but I'm not going to be able to repair this simply because I am not going to attempt to take that board out. You have to pull the knob controls out and everything else because it's all part of the sweep circuit as well as the low voltage power supply. The board is on top here. But I'm going to show you some close-ups of the components. I want to thank some of my viewers who have put in a word to Mr. Carlson's lab, Paul Carlson. I, I watch his videos quite a bit when I get time. And um, the guy is smart. He knows what he's doing. So he chimed in and uh, told me, I don't want to lose my place in the book here, so um, he told me to check out F225, which is one of these five fuses up here. Fuse is good. Uh, R225, which took me a while to look at, look for, and find, and it's buried between the two bridge rectifiers down here, and I'll show you that, and I'm not able to get my probes on it where I can get a good reading. Um, he also told me to um, CR225, which is the bridge rectifier. <coughs> These items here are not accessible unless I take the board out. So I will not be able to repair this because I'm not going to take this board out and I'll show you what's involved in that. The only thing I was not able to find is uh, he says that uh, Q246 may also be suspect, suspect. But I looked all over and I cannot find Q246. But I haven't got my little transistor checker, uh, the ESR meter, the little one, that's not ready to go yet. I haven't made the cases, the cases up here, and I haven't done anything with it. And I have no parts, I have no resistors, I have no capacitors. So, this Saturday, today is Thursday, this Saturday this thing's going to go to Mike, and I'm going to let him deal with it. But I, I want to give you an update on this. So anyways, I found F225, which is the first fuse here. I found R225 buried between the two bridge rectifiers, but I'm not able to get my probes in there because my readings are jumping all over from meg ohms to kilo, thousand ohms, and and, and, and when I do get a, a reading, it keeps changing. So either that resistor is open and I'm reading through the circuit or whatever. But I cannot replace it anyways. I cannot replace the bridge rectifiers. This board's got to come out. And I'm not going to do that. So anyways, um, one, two, three, 
four items, so I found three out of four, so I don't know where Q246 is. But anyways, let me show you with this camera here. So I want to thank uh, Paul Carlson, and I want to thank everybody else that's helped me out with this thing. But even if I got this low voltage power supply working, as I said before, there is going to be no display, and that was the original problem. All right, let me show you some close-ups here. All right, here's the bridge rectifier. This is, uh, I think, CR, I'm trying to go from memory, CR-225, I believe. So I'm not going to be able to replace that if it's gone. I don't see how it could have zapped it, because there was not a huge spark or a snap, big snap. It was a small snap. Here is R-225, the 51,000 ohm resistor right here. I can tell I'm pretty much in focus here with this camera, and that makes me very happy. So this resistor is suspect. This diode is a suspect. This is F225, if I remember the number correctly. It's marked on the board, but I, right now, um, unless I play back the video, I can't see that. And it, everything's upside down. For me to turn this scope around, I would it would be very hard for me to read it because I'd have to hunt, hang over the scope and hunch over it. But anyways, so this fuse is good. All these fuses are good. So we'll move on. In order to remove this, you see how this is? I got to take this out. I got to pull knobs off the front. All this has to come out. These have to come off. This control here, which has the knob I glued on, right here, which is the um, up and down positioning control, if I'm not mistaken, has to, all these knobs and controls have to literally be taken out and pulled out. I'm not going to do that. I'm not pulling this board. This is way beyond me, and I'm going to bust it for sure. So, you can't get at this here. I'm over here now. I have my parallax error problem. Um, you can't get at it from the top of the board. Trying to put this in there, I can't clip it. I tried it. I tried it with the eye lope and flashlight and everything. It just won't clip on there. There's not enough wire uh, coming out of the resistor to do that. It's 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 mounted right tight to the board, just like these diodes here. So I can't even test it because I can't get a, a, a reliable connection on that. It just too tight. And this is what I mean about these small things. All these controls here, uh, these push buttons here, these will slide out. You know, they'll, the buttons will stay on right here. That's not a problem. It's these controls here. This is the one with the, the glued knob. You can see it's out of round when I turn it. It moves up and down. This is the broken knob here, and I glued it on well, hopefully I didn't glue it onto the metal shaft. I glued it onto the plastic piece that was left on the little shaft here. But anyways, all this has to come out right here. This whole board, because this is your low voltage power supply, is what a problem could very well be, but I'm not 100% sure. It might not even be there, but where Q246 is, I've been looking on the uh, pictorial diagrams, which I have on this here, and um, I wasn't able to find it. Here is a little update. I'm using the Kodak, so I'm probably going to be out of focus. After I made this video... I went back out and I got 67.3 volts DC 
at the junction of C-225 and R-225. So in other words, the bridge rectifier, which is right here, excuse my poor drawing here, and the winding of the transformer and so forth, and obviously the fuse has got to be good. So that's what I've got. I got 67. Then when I measured it a few minutes later, it was 67.5. So all intents and purposes, 67 and a half volts is where what I'm getting right at the output of the bridge rectifier. But beyond that, I'm not getting anything. I'm surprised our line voltage is up. Our line voltage has been low, especially when it's hot. You know, but the line voltage is pretty good here today. We had a power glitch very briefly today because we had a, a, a storm come through. We didn't lose power, but the voltage went up from 115 to 121. Uh, a couple out two or three hours ago and it stayed that way so maybe somebody got knocked out in the area and uh, we're getting more voltage here all right so even though these schematics of uh, the print is real small at least it's useful to me now what I'm going to try to do too in the future and I don't know where I'm going to put all the stuff but I've got a Windows 98 computer. I also got my wife's old XP that I showed you in an earlier video. I'm going to take this PDF file and I'm going to put it in one of those computers because they're out here anyways and i got to make a shelf for it and, and put it off to the side. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do that though because that's another thing that's taken up room that I don't have. I have a small shop here, but at least if I do that, I'll be able to refer to the PDF file in the computer if I need to look at stuff because I don't have everything printed out. This took me about half hour to 45 minutes to print this out. What I had to do was to copy the image then bring it into Infant View, paste it on Infant View and print it out as an image. So each schematic, and they came out pretty good. They're not crystal clear, but neither is the PDF file when you zoom in. It's not as clear as, it's not bad, but it's a little hard to read the uh, part numbers and the values. And even with, even with this here, so, I wanted to give you an update on this, but I was hoping that whatever it is, I can attack it from the top of the board. But not when it's buried between the diode, the, between the two diodes here. And I suspected those were the diodes, but I still don't see how I could have blown out a diode with such a tiny little spark. And I... With my luck, I probably blew out Q246, I believe it is. But I don't know where it is on this board. I'm sure somebody will chime in and find it for me, but <laughs> I, I don't have, like I say, I don't have any parts. And I'm gonna let Mike deal with this. He deals with on small component level stuff anyhow. But it would have been nice if it was a simple fix like a fuse, but that's not the way my luck runs. But anyways, I want to thank you all for your support. I appreciate all the support that all of you people out there have uh, given me. And I also appreciate the ones that may not know anything about it, but do chime in, and I appreciate that too. I appreciate everybody that stops by and even just to say hello. So I want to thank you once again. I'm going to upload this video here, and this, like I say, is this particular video was made on the uh, Samsung F40 camcorder, which is a uh, uh, a cheap camcorder. Well, anyways, I've only got a two gig card in this camera, and I don't want to fill it up. So thank you for watching, folks.